Hello, I'm Zakira and welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, we're going to be painting a chemist who is also a panda. Some might even call her a panda chemist. <laughs> yes, the piece that you're going to be seeing the process of in this video was actually a commission I did a few months ago, but I didn't get around to organizing the footage until now, so here we are. Now, the actual finished piece is eventually going to be done in watercolor, but I actually first did the sketch digitally in Clip Studio Paint. And even though I often do thumbnail sketches digitally, this is the first piece where I'm actually going to be printing the sketch out, Ooh. which you'll see in a bit. Now, the original request from my client was to draw a panda wearing glasses and a lab coat in a chemistry lab. And when I heard that, I was like, heck yeah, sign me up. <laughs> But even though this piece is pretty cartoony and my client did leave me a lot of freedom when it came to composing the scene, this still ended up being a pretty tricky piece for me. Because one, I don't think I had ever actually drawn a panda before, which is a crying shame. <laughs> and two, I had no idea what the inside of a chemistry lab looks like. So I actually spent quite a bit of time tweaking the look of the panda because I wasn't really sure how to translate it into something that looks like my style. Pandas are these like big, round, fluffy, adorable things, and my cartoony style tends to have like these short, sharp, lanky people. <laughs> and as for the lab, see, this commission was actually going to be given as a gift to my client's girlfriend, who is a chemist. A little bit of pressure, just a little bit. So I didn't want to just wing it and come up with something that didn't ring true to what an actual chemistry lab looks like. So I looked up a whole bunch of reference photos and let me tell you, to this day, my Pinterest homepage is still infected with pictures of flasks. After so much tweaking with the digital sketch, I decided I really didn't want to have to redraw the whole thing on paper because it wouldn't look the same. So instead, I printed printed the sketch out on a piece of regular printer paper, and I used it to trace the sketch onto my watercolor paper. To keep the sketch in place while I traced, I actually taped the two pieces of paper together with some masking tape. Wow, that sounded like a wrap. To keep the sketch in place while I traced, I stuck them together with some masking tape. <laughs> that, was, that was probably the peak. The peak of cringe on this channel. It's all downhill from here. In order to trace, I needed a light box, and I do not own a light box at the moment, nor did I own one when I did this piece, so instead, I turned my laptop into one. I do not recommend this if your laptop doesn't have a screen that is built to be drawn on. And even then, this is probably not the best idea. But regardless, my laptop does happen to come with a stylus to draw on the screen, which I do for all of my digital work and I've been doing it for years, so I felt pretty confident that I wouldn't be damaging my screen with the pressure of my pencil. And to turn the screen into a light box, I just opened up a picture of blank white color and put it in full screen mode and then turn the brightness of my screen all the way up. Another thing I'm not sure I can recommend. But I did make sure to give my screen a break every like 15 minutes or so just in case. You know, just in case my laptop didn't like being treated like a light bulb. And it ended up working out pretty dang well, I gotta say. Aside from the fact that the touchscreen was still able to pick up my fingers through the paper, which was really annoying because every once in a while the picture would just close on me or something like that, so I had to wear this thick winter glove on my left hand. But hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. Once I was finished burning out my eyeballs, I removed the sketch template and was left with a nice, clean sketch to work with on my watercolor paper.
Before going in with the paints, I first did the line work, which is one of my favorite parts of doing traditional art, and especially so with this piece because there were a lot of really fun details. The final lab layout was of my own design, but with kind of combining a whole bunch of elements I saw in various reference photos. I even got the names of some of the equipment my client's girlfriend uses to see if I could slip in a couple. And it's not very noticeable, but on the desk in the background, there's something called agar gel electrophoresis equipment, which I have since been Google educated on its DNA separating uses. Pretty neat, I gotta say. Other than that though, frankly, the other equipment I added were more cliche, easily recognizable things like a microscope and flasks filled with various liquids. Because one, they create an opportunity to add color to an otherwise pretty white and gray environment. And two, when objects are simplified down to this small cartoony style, unless they are iconic, you really can't tell what they are. I mean, I tried for the life of me to add in a centrifuge because that was one of the few pieces of equipment that I actually knew <laughs> what it was. I have very vast, large scientific knowledge, if you didn't notice. <laughs> But no matter how I drew it, it just ended up looking like a box sitting on a counter with maybe a couple of things sticking out of it. There was really no defining way to really know what it was. So instead, I opted for more flashy, pointy, doohickey-covered, glassy equipment. Once the lines were dry, I erased my sketch, taped down the paper, and got to painting. In addition to the trickiness of drawing the panda and the lab, the coloring also added a bit of trickiness to this piece for me because as it turns out, labs tend to have a whole lot of white and gray and not a whole lot of anything else. Surprise, surprise. And since my main subject was a panda, that just meant more white and gray. So going into painting, I felt like the whole thing was starting to come out kind of washed out and lacking contrast. So eventually I just kind of went out on a limb and darkened the tabletops in the foreground. And that really helped add some sharpness and a sense of depth to the whole thing and also helped to pick up the black from the panda. To help add more of a sense of color, I did do these very subtle washes of color in places that were otherwise either white or gray. For example, on the lab coat, I added some yellowish reflection from the overhead lights, as well as some pinks and blues to help pick up the colors from the flask liquids. So all in all, I really like the final result. I think it's really cute and it was a lot of fun to make. I think that is one of the coolest parts of doing commissions. They often put you in situations where you have to draw something that maybe you never would have thought of otherwise. And of course that can sometimes make it kind of nerve wracking when you're doing it for a client, but I think it just helps you become a better artist all around. In this particular case, I was so happy to hear that my client and the person who received the painting as a gift both really loved the piece and even said that the lab was actually really accurate and reminded her of actual labs that she's worked in in the past. So they were so sweet and it was so nice to get that stamp of approval on a drawing that I never would have thought of to draw before. 
So that definitely made all the photo researching and trickiness worth it. Happy ending! Hooray! And that wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching and listening and spending some of your day with me. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please be sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Also be sure to hit that little bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. If you have a minute, be sure to leave a comment down below letting me know what you think. How do you like this piece? What do you think of pandas? Do you like chemistry? Thank you to everyone who has supported me and this channel by purchasing my books or my brand new enamel pin, haha, <laughs> wink wink, promo promotion, <laughs> or other items from my shop. If you'd like to check out my shop, commission some artwork from me, or subscribe to my newsletter, all that and more can be found over on my website, sakura.com. The link is down below in the description box. And until next time, stay awesome, stay inspired, always. See ya!